We've seen a lot of films over the years where a sudden twist or reveal shocks us to our very core. Of course, that does make for good cinema, so I guess risking the odd heart attack every once in a while does have its merits. Anyway, keep those nerves ready because today, the TV region gives to you the top 25 most shocking scenes across films and TV. There aren't many filmmaking legends that are active right now, or even alive for that matter. Quentin Tarantino has done enough to be qualified as one, and that's because of the consistency he showed in his films. Of course, there have always been people who have accused him of various, um, preferences, but I don't want to stick my feet where they don't belong. Uh, see what I did there? Anyway, Inglorious Bastards is probably his best film since Pulp Fiction, and rightfully so. This is classic Tarantino keeping us entertained throughout what should have been a very lengthy runtime. Of course, with so many twists and turns coming in regularly, there was bound to be a massive shocker somewhere around the corner, and it came in the form of the deadly finale where Shoshana burns down the cinema hall and then Reigns men shoot down Adolf Hitler, thus rewriting history as we know it. Yet continuity errors and historical accuracy have always been an issue when it comes to films like these, but our man Tarantino took it in a completely different direction. Of course, the dramatic impact was massive and Eli Roth might have enjoyed murdering the Fuhrer a bit too much, but that's just how it is when you're dealing with a director who loves to shock his audience. It was a refreshing take on filmmaking and remains one of the key innovations of this century. I have a message for Germany. That you are all going to die. Hello, Mark. Dr. Quinn, I want to play a game. Before I get into the details, I just want to say that I really liked Saw 10. The latest instalment in the Saw franchise allowed us to see John Kramer in a completely different light, but that wasn't the case 19 years ago when we first met the character. The OG Saw flick became such a hit that it spawned multiple sequels all the way to 2023, and judging by the success it's enjoying, we haven't seen the end of it just yet. Who do we thank for such a monumental achievement? Well, it's a mix of various elements, but the one that sticks out the most is how the franchise has consistently managed to shock its audience every single time. Time. However, nothing can be as shocking as the moment when we realise that the dead body between Adam and Dr. Lawrence was the mastermind who put them there in the first place. It was such a confounding moment that I couldn't wrap my head around it even days after I watched the film. Not only did it showcase Kramer's genius, it also gave us an idea of how dedicated the man is to his craft. The best part is that he gave Adam yet another shock by revealing the keys to his chains was in the bathtub and went down the drain right at the start. <laughs> Bro lost the game before it even began. Say what you will about Darren Aronofsky, you can't deny the man loves to challenge his audience. Black Swan is probably his most universally acclaimed film, since most of his other movies don't really cater to the general public. Having said that, I'm not implying that you should watch this one with your parents either. Let me give you an example with the most shocking moment from the film. It's when Nina thinks that she stabbed Lily, but has only sabotaged herself as she was hallucinating the whole time. I definitely wasn't expecting to see this, but it did make sense since once I wrapped my head around how disturbed Nina really was. Watching her struggle with her illness throughout the movie was rather difficult to watch, so when she finally ended it all, it kind of felt like a relief in a way. Plus, she ended up achieving the performance she wanted to give, because that's what a true artist is all about. Okay, just to be clear, I'm not saying that you have to stab yourself in the stomach to be able to give your best performance. Also, Mila Kunis gives an amazing performance alongside Natalie Portman, but I just can't see her in a serious role after being so used to her voice as Meg in Family Guy. What did you do? What did you do? Jordan Peele's made quite a name for himself in the world of horror, which is a shock in itself, considering how famous he got due to his comedy. Of course, that's not to say that he's not meant for the genre, because he's proven his merit with films like Get Out and Us. Speaking of the latter, I know that the general consensus is that the film chooses symbolism over logic, but the final reveal was pretty impressive in my books. I was rooting for Adelaide the whole time, only to realise that she was the clone, not Red. That moment of realisation didn't just hit me or the audience, it hit her as well, and the smile on her face right after creeped the living daylights out of me. 
Lupita Nyong'o turns in a spectacular performance as both Adelaide and the pseudo-villain Red trying to speak in that broken voice must have been a serious pain and she deserves all the accolades in the world for pulling it off so well. The film is filled with twists throughout and would have probably included the reveal about clones anyway but this one's a lot better because it completely changes how we view the protagonist. Everything's gonna be like it was before. He's dangerously ill, violent. He killed seven people that we know of. Oh my God, how could she fool us? Man, this movie was so messed up, I couldn't stop cursing myself for watching it back when I was a teenager. The premise of this film is the actual shock, and I've rarely seen horror films take innovation to such levels before. I mean, a family adopts a girl who's supposed to be nine years old, hoping that they'll now live a happy life together, only to find out that she's actually 33 years old, has a dwarfism disorder, and likes to kill the husband of the family if her seductions don't work. Like, bro, what were the creators on when they made this concept? Esther is truly terrifying to watch, especially after the big reveal, so my top moment from the film is where Kate gets that all-important phone call revealing everything. I loved all of this movie despite its twisted nature because the filmmaking on display was unique. You also have to give credit to the actress Isabel Thurman. I'm not sure how old she was at the time of filming this, but wow, what she did was incredible. A young girl acting as an adult who was pretending to be a little girl is the definition of talent. She disappeared a year ago and we lost track of her. If it's really Nina, you don't have much time. Just a rubber ball. No. Not normal. Not a normal rubber ball. It's magic. If we're talking about films with dramatic twists and shocking revelations, it's hard to keep Christopher Nolan out of the picture. However, I'm not going with any of his blockbuster hits for this entry. I'm choosing his underrated cult hit, The Prestige, released in 2006. I'm sure you may have seen this movie, so I'm just going to cut right ahead and say that the takeaway scene was when Hugh Jackman's Robert Angio finally realises that Christian Bale's Alfred Borden was just using a double the whole time. It was kind of neat to have Michael Caine make this revelation because that dude's probably going to be in every Nolan flick, even if his spirit has to come in for the shoot. The way this scene plays out is natural and undramatic, but that's the beauty of it. We as the audience are presented with a rather shocking discovery in a somewhat nonchalant manner because it only adds to the perplexing nature of the scene. Also, if you look at it from another angle, I think it's pretty funny that Batman was fooling the Wolverine the whole time like this. It's nothing easy about two men sharing one life. Well, out of all the random monsters you'd expect to find in a basement, I'm sure a homeless husband would have been the least of your concerns. Of course, a filmmaker like Bong Joon-ho is known for delivering beyond expectations and 2019's Parasite did exactly that. Forget the Oscars and the accolades for a bit, this is a fine example of experimental filmmaking with the use of generic tropes. Sure, the members of the Kim family were busy living their best lives, but what Moon Gwang was hiding from everyone was the shadiest stroke of genius I've ever seen. I mean, hiding your jobless husband from loan sharks in the secret basement of a huge mansion-like house is not a concept I was familiar with until I watched this movie. Bro was just chilling as if he owned the place too. The reason why this moment works so well is because of all the chatter around a ghost roaming the halls of the house. Needless to say, the shock reveal had all in splits after realizing the symbolic disparity between the rich and the poor. See, this is why I don't want to buy a huge home. There might be rooms I'll never be aware of with people secretly living there. Okay, you ready? I did say that Get Out was a better movie than us, so I had to prove it by placing this entry higher up on the list. This was the film that made me a fan of Jordan Peele as a director, and the fact that it's his directorial debut only makes it even more special. Chris obviously didn't deserve anything that was happening to him, save for Rose, who was always by his side no matter what. Unfortunately, this scene went on to prove that she was the saboteur all along. I've got to give it to the acting here from both sides. On the one hand, we have Chris, who doesn't want to believe that his girlfriend set him up right from the start, and on the other hand, we have Rose, who's just toying with him and frustrating the audience. The soft sound of the keys actually jingling every time the camera pan to Rose and the helpless voice she makes till she actually reveals her true intentions just boils my blood. However, that's a testament to how effective this moment is as the key twist in the film. I don't know where they are. Rose? Rose! Rose, give me those keys! Rose, give me... Give me those keys. Rose, now! Now, the keys! Uh -huh. 
Oh boy, this is one of the greatest scenes of all time. But yeah, I'm rating these entries on the basis of how shocking they are. Otherwise, this would have taken the top spot easily. Ridley Scott established himself as a top tier director with 1979's Alien and the chest burster scene alone makes him eligible for GOAT status. Forget everything else, directors like Stanley Kubrick were ringing up Scott to ask him how he pulled this one off, especially back then. The entire sequence was shot using practical effects, so my respect for it just naturally shoots up by a thousand. It's such an eerie moment because there's no ominous background score to alert us to what's going to happen. So when that xenomorph ended up bursting out of Kane's chest, every single human being on the planet lost their minds. If you look at it from a general perspective, this basically changed Ripley's whole life. Her final moments of normalcy were right before this absolute beauty of a scene which eventually changed pop culture forever. <laughs> We all knew this was going to happen, especially if you read the comics, but even then, this moment felt chilling. With Thor defeating Thanos and the Infinity Stones using Stormbreaker, we're all given a false sense of hope, thinking that the threat's over. However, that wasn't to be, and the Mad Titan snapped his fingers harder than Superman snapped Zod's neck. Yeah, I'm done using the Gwen Stacy references. Emma Stone does deserve better, right? Anyway, what followed the snap was truly devastating and totally deviated from the typical MCU formula. Watching this in theatres after years and years of seeing our heroes save the day each and every time only for them to lose and half of all existence to disappear felt like a real moment. The theatre was deafeningly quiet which goes on to show how affected people were watching this scene. It wasn't just shocking, it was outright unbelievable. TV region isn't just about comic book blockbusters, I'm a certified cinephile and I've proved it time and time again. I just mentioned legendary filmmakers like Stanley Kubrick and Ridley Scott and now I'm going to pay tribute to cinema's most thrilling director with his most epic horror film, Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock was a master of building suspense and in the case of Psycho, he took cinema to greater heights. Now I know the shower scene is supposed to be the most shocking moment of all time but I also want to add the big reveal regarding Norman Bates and his mother. Realising that he developed a secondary personality and actually kept his mom's remains in the house for so long was super freaky and back in the 60s it must have probably felt like some iconic revolution which it actually was. Honestly I wasn't so surprised when I first saw the shower scene because I was used to other films using this trope however Hitchcock was the first one to do it and the same applies to the nasty reveal that changed horror movies forever. This is bullshit. I'm not listening to this. You are insane. No, you're insane. We simply do not have time for this crap. This particular moment led to all those memes where people still joke about Edward Norton and Brad Pitt being the same person. If it's that big in pop culture, then you can imagine how much of an impact it made when it was released. Surprisingly, Fight Club didn't really do that well as far as the box office numbers were concerned, but the kind of cult status that it attained over the last decade or so is simply unmatchable. I mean, just look at the scene where we finally learn that the narrator and Tyler are one and the same. Well, the narrator is technically going by the name of Jack here, but that's irrelevant when you realise just how much of a shocker this is to everyone. Man, David Fincher knew how to direct thrillers, and I really hope we get to see more of him in the future. I like the killer, but I just don't want this to be his last film. Little by little, you're just letting yourself become... Tyler Durden. Uh, holy shit. This is so cool. Ah, ha, ha. M. Night Shyamalan has received a lot of polarizing reviews in general as a director, but the dude knows how to spin a twist, and the best possible example of this can be seen in the ending of 2017's Split. Right until the end of the film, I thought it was an independent production focusing on a unique topic, but then they went ahead and showed David freaking Dunn, thus confirming that what we just watched was the sequel to 2000's Unbreakable. The movie as a whole was a pretty solid effort, but man, that ending scene is peak cinema. The music is incredible, and you can sense the fear in those people at the diner as they hear about this demonic monster now being somewhere amongst their community and yet they didn't realize that the hero who'd saved them is sitting right there gotta say this is probably one of the most ingenious and original twist endings in the history of cinema good on you Shyamalan never let the critics define your talents there are conflicting stories if the suspect is alive or dead after sustaining two point blank gunshots 
gun down, David. Seems that envy is my sin. No, oh, what's in the box? Not to, give me the what's gun. in the fucking box? Give me the gun. He just told Man, this was a tough one to stomach, but the execution is flawless from all standpoints. Seven was the kind of thriller that established the dark vibe of the 90s, especially when it came to crime thrillers. We've got David Fincher once again coming to the fore as we see the infamous what's in the box scene coming in at number 12. The obvious horrors of John Doe's crimes are well established, but spare a moment for David Mills here. Brad nailed the heck out of this role. Seeing a man's soul being torn apart is pretty rough. At first he's crying, then trying to hold it together for a couple of seconds, and then breaking down again with anger and sadness each taking a stab at him this has to be one of the most tragic scenes in history no matter what you do next the bad guy has already won it doesn't make a difference whether you kill him or not because he's already taken everything from you oh god oh god oh Here's another film from 1995 that just misses out on making it to the top 10. This really was a busy era for this genre, hey? I can probably watch this movie all over again and still be impressed by the ending. The moment where Agent Kujan finds out the true identity of Kaiser Sose has got to be one of the biggest WTF moments in cinema history. Bro had his man sitting right in front of him the whole time and let him go after listening to a story he fabricated just by looking at the images in his room. Of course it shows how quick Kaiser is on his feet and I had literal goosebumps when I saw him changing the way he walked. Plus, the quote he gives in the end was an added touch of class to an already flawless plan. It truly must have been an elevating experience to watch this in the cinema. Kaiser Sose or no Kaiser Sose, if Keaton is alive, he's not coming up again. I'll find him. Just fucking kill me. I am killing you. You must have heard the saying, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Let's just say that she sang the daylights out of her voice in this movie. The Departed is yet another gangster classic from the genius mind of Martin Scorsese, probably one of the most sincere directors in cinema history. The film in itself is a perfect game of cat and mouse wrapped into a tragic story about betrayal and loyalty convoluted together to form the kind of confusion that even David Lynch would approve of. Of course the film is also helped by a stellar cast consisting of Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg. The elevator scene is one of the best film twists this century, not only because it's sudden and abrupt, but also because it immediately ends Costigan, who's a character we've been rooting for the entire time. Of course, if you want me to explain this in simple English, a fake cop kills a cop who kills a cop, only for him to be killed by another cop later on. Did you think you were the only one he had on the inside? Costello was going to sell us to the FBI. It's you and me now, you understand? We got to take care of each other, you understand? Thank you for coming. I I hope you had a pleasant journey. Right, enough talk about cops. Let's get down to some very dirty business. I was talking about avoiding taxes, okay? What were you thinking? Ozark's a show that was an underdog at the beginning, but went on to become a powerhouse at Netflix. The premise of the show is pretty straightforward. A loser accountant gets caught up with some bad company and needs to keep his family safe using his tax saving skills. However, it's the characters that really did the trick for fans everywhere. I mean, sure, I'm not a huge fan of Wendy, but Marty and Ruth have been total standouts. As you'd expect, working for a shady cartel does come with its own set of disadvantages, but in this case, it's the strangely tall Helen Price, who ironically pays the ultimate price for getting in Omar's way. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting to see her go, but then again, I'm not a screenwriter, am I? Well, neither are the creators of The Witcher, but let's save that streaming debacle for another time, yeah? The moment is cold, abrupt, and if you think about it, might have also taken inspiration from the previous entry. They do say that imitation is the best form of flattery, don't they? Today is our beginning. Uh, hi. Who are you? Tell me. Don't you recognize me, Andrew? I've been your primary psychiatrist for the last two years. I'm Lester Sheehan. 
Hey, here I am again with yet another Scorsese classic with Leonardo DiCaprio in a leading role. Shutter Island is one of those mind-bending movies that really make you question everything that's happening. As a matter of fact, I actually thought it was directed by Christopher Nolan at first, considering the themes. It's a brilliant psychological thriller that toys with your emotions and puts you in the same situation as its protagonist, which in this case is Teddy Daniels. Poor guy just wanted to play detective, but then Chuck had to drop the ball and ruin his fantasy roleplay. Apart from Leonardo's impeccable performance, I also want to say that Mark Ruffalo really outdid himself here with his subtle acting and eloquent delivery. The scene where we find out that Teddy is actually a patient totally messes with our head and I for one was actually waiting for another twist to just pop out of somewhere. I told you not to come in here. I told you. This would be the end of you. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> it's the police, ma'am. Your son's been hit by a drunk driver. He's dead. <laughs> there's build-up and there's simple eruption. That's the kind of case here with Todd Phillips' rendition of the iconic DC villain, The Joker. With legends like Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger already giving us iconic portrayals of the character, Joaquin Phoenix had his work cut out for him, but the man delivered, and how? While the movie is a somber, nihilistic interpretation on the harmful effects of societal toxicity, Joker himself is actually a bright spot when it comes to the magnitude of his performance. He pulls off the maniacal personality with total authenticity and was also able to switch his energy from sad, lonely loser to well, energetic lonely loser, I suppose. Since this is a list filled with shockers, you must have already guessed the scene in question, right? Now, to be fair, Robert De Niro's selection as a sketchy talk show host isn't much of a surprise considering this movie takes heavy inspiration from Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, which also happen to be Scorsese films. However, it's the suddenness of Joker shooting through his head that's horrifyingly magnificent. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill with loner with a it. society that abandons him and treats him like trash! Oh, fuck you away! Oh, word. All right, I'll call you back. Son of a bitch! Oh, no, I can't I'm doing it! Oh, no. What? Ah. We're officially into A24 territory now. The Safdie brothers are a promising director-brother duo that you should definitely explore. Yeah, sure, you may have watched Uncut Gems, but that's primarily because you knew The Weeknd had a guest appearance in it. What really stands out, though, isn't his pineapple hair, but Adam Sandler's uncharacteristically brilliant portrayal of a gambler struggling to cope with the consequences of his addiction. The movie in itself is almost like a bet the audience is placing on Howard Ratner as he navigates through a chaotic plot loaded with heaps of self-loathing. And that's where this entry comes into play, you see. After all that time worrying about what's going to happen to poor old Howard, we're given a glimpse of hope when he wins his magic bet, then he gets shot to death within a mere second. And that's that. WTF, right? Like, share and subscribe if you consider yourself to be an uncut gem in this world of jewellery adult adults. Alright, let's keep it moving. Man, doesn't it hurt when you win, only to find out that you lost right at the start? Dexter's a show that focuses primarily on his psychopathic serial killer emerging victorious thanks to his wit and grit. But in this case, the tables have surely turned, and not in a fun Michael Scott kind of way. At this point in the show, we're pretty much rooting for a murderer, and he does us justice when he kills another murderer, Arthur Mitchell. However, the twist is that the murdered murderer actually murdered his murderer's wife way before the murder. Right, that turned out to be a bit of a tongue twister, but I think you get what I mean, right? The shock isn't just for the audience. We see the otherwise cold and calculated Dexter showing genuine emotion as the woman he loved has been killed in a cruel circle of fate. Both of us. Harry was right. I thought I could change what I am, keep my family safe. Ever heard of a trap? Yeah, it's very satisfying when you're the one setting it, not so much when you're the one on the receiving end though, right? Gus Fring is the epitome of villainous perfection. He was so good in Breaking Bad that they made him Homelander's boss in The Boys. He's smart, 
resourceful, intimidating and strategic all the time. Not that a show with Walter White in it needed any improvement, but Gus took the show to GOAT status in an instant. You want to know the best part though? The way he's killed is pure genius and a fitting way to bid farewell to a beloved character. The bombing in the hospital room is a scene that can only be enjoyed if you follow the show right from the start and oh boy, it sure pays off. Hector might not have been a very memorable character if it wasn't for this scene, but I'm glad the writers did him justice. Is that how you want to be remembered? Last chance to look at me, Hector. Who are you? What do you want from me? What do I want? I want you to spend the rest of your life in this cell, staring at four walls and wondering how you missed it. How you let yourself be so blinded by your ego that you convinced yourself that you were one step ahead when you were always two steps behind. It takes a lot to bamboozle Morgan Freeman, but it turns out that the Hulk is a lot sneakier than we give him credit for. Now You See Me is a fun movie film with light-hearted comedy, slick tricks and a commendable cast overall, but nothing beats the final plot twist where Dylan reveals to Thaddeus that he was the mastermind all along. It may seem a bit silly now, I mean, considering that the movie's aged as well as Donatella Versace, but in hindsight, nobody would have been able to guess that Dylan was the imposter among us. All it takes is an expositional rant from Thaddeus that pretty much sums up the whole thing for us, and we're being honest here. We're all shocked to see the passionate detective revealing himself to be the genius saboteur. Hmm. Maybe Mark Ruffalo didn't want a repeat of what happened in Zodiac, right? Who? Who? I don't know who, but they had to have access to the warehouse. Plant the mirrors. Always a step ahead of me. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. Good dads are a rare commodity these days, and I like to blame this on the 80s. They gave rise to all these disco kings who'd rather make the hangover movies look like a Sunday picnic than be there for their kids when they really need them the most. Now, the OG Star Wars trilogy easily ranks amongst the best franchise starters of all time, and for good reason too. The technology used in the film truly revolutionized sci-fi filmmaking, and Darth Vader stands out as one of the best villains to have ever graced the screen. There's one little stain on his legacy though, he was an absent father to Luke Skywalker. The big reveal had everyone shocked beyond imagination, and Luke's reaction to the iconic line is as appropriate as it gets when it comes to unsuspected shockers. It is your destiny. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. So when you use the word shocking, it's hard not to think about the first four or five seasons of Game of Thrones. That show could have easily become a legendary work of art at the same level as Breaking Bad or The Sopranos, but I guess you can't have everything nowadays, can you? Now, in a series filled with some of the most disgusting and vile acts ever to be committed on television, The Red Wedding is a light that shines brighter than any diamond Rihanna would have ever seen. Yes, the losses of Caitlyn and Rob Stark were definitely traumatizing enough, but to see Rob's wife getting stabbed right in her pregnant belly was just way too shocking for anyone to see. I mean, I don't think anyone will ever recover from this one. So please, if you're planning on watching the show for the first time, make sure you proceed with caution. <laughs> and there you go. Hope you like the list. Were you shocked? Or was it just a regular evening in the park for you? Let me know in the comments below. Head over to the links in the description for exclusive access to my Patreon and socials. I'll see you next time on the TV region.